Hey guys, thanks for tuning into today's video. First of all, I would like to apologize that it's been months since I posted the harvest video for the Flow Hive, and I've been meaning to post a response to all the questions, comments, concerns, accusations, but I've moved twice in that time, and things have been really crazy, so I have a moment, I'm gonna sit down, answer some of your questions, and I actually should have time now to be able to get back into the flow of posting videos on a regular basis, so. That's good. All right, so first what I'd like to do is just address the general questions. Uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and go through this list and answer any particular ones that I haven't answered in my general answer. Are you following me? You're with me so far? First of all, my purpose for keeping bees is not to steal their honey. Uh, it's the reason I use the flow hive is not necessarily to make it easier for me. It's so that it's easier on the bees. It's less invasive, it's less stressful. You don't end up having to squish any bees. It's just very gentle. As you saw in the harvest video, the bees aren't even bothered. And how it works is the honey drains out and the bees simply can feel with their little feet on top of the comb, uh, they can feel that the honey's been drained out from the inside and they just start chewing off the wax, cleaning out the cell, refilling it, capping it back up. It's very simple and they're not stressed out by it, by it um, from what I could tell. You know, I mean, I'm not them, but from what I can tell based off of their behavior, they were not stressed out. Uh, the reason they were all swarmed on the outside of the hive is because it was super hot that day. Um, this harvest was done down in Charleston, South Carolina in the summertime, I think it was June, and it was almost 100 degrees that day. And that is another reason why our honey was flowing so quickly that it overflowed. Yes, I should have brought the bottom board up, my mistake, but that's not why honey was pouring out all over the place. It's because we opened the full frame at once and that was too much honey for the tube to handle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the video and then you'll know what I'm talking about. And so with that mess that was created, uh, we didn't end up having an issue with bugs. I cleaned up all on the outside and in the ground and everything, and then the bees cleaned up all of that. All that mess that was inside, all the honey that was overflowing inside of the box, uh, they cleaned it all up. They're amazing. Uh, so. There was that. Now, regarding, oh, I stole all their honey, I'm evil and greedy, I can just address that now. Didn't steal all their honey. Okay, first of all, I had three boxes, a brood box and two supers. Uh, the flow hive was the top super. Uh, both boxes were full of honey. And we did check into individual frames. We pulled them out and looked at them to make sure that they were fully capped and everything. Uh, we didn't just blindly go by like the one window or something like that. We did check, which I recommend for, I mean, anyone that has a flow hive, I could easily see how it could be abused. It makes it very easy to harvest honey. You could take all the honey and not give a shit about your bees and then just get more bees and just keep doing it. I get that, but that's, that's not what I'm doing. Though, you know, I do appreciate the concern because I think that other people with flow hives definitely need to um, still practice, you know, humane harvesting and uh, be concerned about the welfare of their bees. They should be, they should come first. You know, first and foremost, are the bees happy? That's how I work. So we did harvest in early summer, um, and down in Charleston, uh, that's a pretty good time to harvest. It was for us, at least. The, all of our frames were full. There was no more room for honey. Uh, so and there was still plenty of time for them to stock up for the winter. So we harvested. And within, I would say, you know, within a month, two months, uh, the frames are full again. So there's no concern there. We, we practiced responsible harvesting techniques, if you will. So though I appreciate all the concern for the bees, because I'm with you, I would never do anything to harm my bees. So, and for the timing, I did put this in the description of the video, but I'll go ahead and say it here too. We got the Flow Hive brand new, had no bees, okay? Put bees in in one, one brood box. Once they'd filled that, uh, we used guided frames. Once they filled that with brood and some honey and stuff like that, then we added another, we added a super on top. We put the queen secluder in between those two so that it would be mostly honey up there. Then once that was 
pretty much full and they've been working a lot on that. And then we added the flow super and moved the queen secluder up one more and put it right below the flow. That process to get them up into the flow hive and working on the flow hive took, I would say, maybe a month. It did take them a while to prepare the flow frames. They were meticulously cleaning and putting propolis and all the cracks everywhere uh, for a couple weeks before they filled to put anything in the in the uh, in the cells. Then they started bringing in honey, and as soon as they started bringing in honey, it was like two weeks later, it was full, which was amazing. Um, they worked so fast, and it's that probably due to the time of year. They were happy, healthy bees. We were in an area where there was a good bit of flowers. We we were set up for success, and so we had a very successful harvest. So that whole process from bees in the box to harvest, I would say three months tops. The harvesting process, once you start draining the honey, that took a few hours, I believe, maybe maybe two hours. But on a colder day, it would have taken a lot longer because the honey was like pouring out. Okay, so I feel like I've addressed the general questions. I'm gonna scroll through the comments um, and address anything that deserves a direct response. Uh, we did not prepare the flow frames with anything. I know that um, I've seen some people paint them with, with wax, with melted beeswax. Uh, I've seen some people spray sugar on them. Uh, we didn't do anything. I like to try the most natural way possible first, and then if things don't work out naturally, then, you know, I would be more inclined to do something like, the wax idea is probably a very good idea, I would think that that would speed up uh, the process. I don't know if it would necessarily encourage them to take to the flow frames more or not, but I think it would definitely speed up the process because the wax is already there for them. I do not make these hives, I do not sell these hives. This is a copyrighted, trademarked, whatever invention that was invented in Australia a couple years ago. Flow Hive, go to flowhive.com or honeyflow.com or just Google Flow Hive. Trust me, you'll find it. It's uh, kind of a craze right now, or at least it was uh, about a year ago. So I was asked uh, by uh, Charles Cunningham if I would say it's worth, worth the investment because it is a um, high upfront cost. I would say yes. If your goal is to be able to keep bees in a much less stressful, less invasive kind of way, then the, you know, the flow hive is for you. You're not having to tear apart the hive, tear out the frames, put them in an extractor, you know, I'm, all this, it's, it's a whole process, it's messy. I mean, I have respect for, you know, traditional beekeepers. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's, it's just, it's a lot of work and it's, you know, it can be harmful and stressful on the bees. And you also have to buy all the equipment. I don't know how expensive that stuff is, but um, the extractor and all of the supplies that go with traditional beekeeping. But with that said, I feel that it was worth the investment. Um, we're very happy with with the harvest that we got, with how the bees are doing in the flow hive. It seemed to work very well, very smoothly, very clean, you know, except for the overflow, which is a problem that I've solved in my mind, so I know for next time how to, how to do that properly. Okay, here's a nice aggressive comment from a random do-it-all. The flow hive isn't beekeeping, it's just an expansive beehive that takes out all the work of a regular beehive, and me being a beekeeper of 21 hives, now they're a bunch of idiots running around with flow hives thinking they're beekeepers, and people think beekeeping is just that simple, and the flow hive is reckless, if your hive gets mites, it will decimate serious beekeepers' hives. Okay. Um, I have noticed that there is a lot of resentment towards the flow hive from the traditional beekeepers because being a traditional beekeeper is a lot more work, absolutely. The harvest alone is a lot more work, but that is the only place where there is more work involved. Just because you have a flow hive does not mean that you should not be doing hive inspections. You definitely need to be inspecting your hive. You need to be checking the bottom board. You need to be making sure you don't have hive beetles, mites, and, and just checking on the general health of your hive. Check on your queen, how is she doing? You know, before you harvest, check the frame. It's that part is no different. And I, I really hope that other people with flow hives 
don't think that you don't have to do hive inspections. Because as far as I'm concerned, the only benefit of the Flow Hive is that it makes the harvesting process less invasive, less stressful on the bees. So, just wanted to clarify that. There are a lot of ridiculous comments that this video would be an hour long if I addressed them all. So I'm trying to address practical comments and not just blatant attacks. Somebody said that they think the taste of honey would be different because the plastic comb is made up of 300 different chemicals, wax comb is natural, etc, etc. Um, I found that the honey tasted amazing and better than regular honey. And I think, uh, I think that was due to how fresh it was, how it hadn't been aerated, filtered, anything like that, it hadn't been messed with, it just came straight from the comb into the jar, jar sealed flavor locked in. I found that no, no, the plastic didn't change the flavor. I'm just, I just need to address this. Simon Jones says, I hate these goddamn evil hipsters. They only care about the money, not the beans. Thanks. Guillaume McHugh asked, do the bees go to you while harvesting the honey to sting you, or do they not mind you being by their hive? Um, they didn't seem to mind at all. They had no idea. Um, occasionally, I, in the video, there was a bee rescue where a bee flew into the jar. We stopped everything and saved the bee. The bee survived. No bees were harmed. But yeah, they, uh, they don't know. In fact, they're kind of busy because busy bees they're kind of busy because they're like, oh wait, what's happening? These cells are empty. So they're like checking out on that. And then they're also, at the time, we're all outside because it was fucking hot. Hohawk City says, I can only imagine this system with automatic honey harvest and hyper-aggressive Africanized bees. You'll probably harvest twice a day. Okay. That's the kind of mindset that is concerning. No. No, no, no automatic harvesting, no Africanized bees, though I do believe that Africanized bees are going to be the bees that are left. Um, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video. But yeah, no, that's, people like that are the people that should not be beekeeping. This is a nice comment. Your video is making it easier for the rest of us newbies. Amazing and fun to follow the many new beekeepers who are all learning together, and your patience with the people who haunt YouTube with negative and ignorant comments is admirable. Thanks for posting. Thank you for posting. Thank you. And you're welcome. Aiden Daniels. Yes, yes, you are. It, not your give, will die. Chris VW says, so I'm interested to know what your protocol for swarm control and disease monitoring is with this hive. Same as any other beehive. I haven't had to deal with swarming because it was a new hive, but I would add more boxes, make more space. Split the hive if it came to that. Disease monitoring and control, frequent hive inspections, based off of what I'm seeing, handle it appropriately. I did get stuff for mites in case that happens. I check the bottom board all the time and I feel like you can tell a lot from the bottom board um, if you're seeing a lot of bee parts or if you're seeing hive beetles. Um, supposedly you should be able to see little red mites and stuff. I am a new beekeeper so I'm also learning but I am doing hive inspections and doing the research and you know I found that with beekeeping, you can only do so much reading and preparing. Um, it kind of does come down to gaining experience with it and just diving right in and just doing your best and learning as you go. And as long as you're being as good to the bees as you possibly can, I don't see any harm in that. I'm a very hands-on person, so that's how I learn best is my experience. What if the bee put the baby in? Somebody already addressed that. Um, I'll address it though. Queen secluder below the flow super. Put a queen secluder there. The queen does not come up and put the baby in. Um, Parker Thompson says that he's looking to invest in a flow hive in the new year and, and can I provide any great resources and educational links, tools, guides that would help someone like himself. 
watch all the Flow Hive videos. I mean, their website is chocked full of instructional videos, watching videos from people like me and just regular people using the Flow Hive for the first time. Um, there is definitely a learning curve as with anything new. Yep, bring that bottom board up to the top level, like everybody's saying. Only open the frames a half at a time, especially if it's warm out. Maybe if you want them to start filling the flow frames quicker, maybe paint it with the melted wax or spray it with sugar to draw them to it. But I would, I would make sure that you're, you've got at least two boxes full of happy, healthy bees before you put the flow super on. Because once those, you get two boxes that are just full, um, put your queen secluder on top, put your flow hive on top of that, and they should, you know, expand and into the flow uh, the flow super and it does take a little time to get going as I've said but just let nature take its course um, but if you have any uh, specific questions when the time comes you know reach out that's fine I don't mind helping you out if, if I can you know yes I know that my video is shaky I need a tripod I, I don't have the money to invest in like great film equipment maybe someday but for now I just kind of propped the GoPro up on like a stack of boxes on the table we were working at, so yeah, it was a little wobbly, which I'm sorry, but yeah, I got the point across. Okay, so I think I addressed the majority of what I found to be important questions, relevant questions. Um, for those of you that were wondering what it is that I do with all that honey, I sold some of it, I gave some of it away to friends and family, I've eaten a lot of it, and um, the rest is right up there stacked on top of my cabinet. That's all that I have left, so I've gone through a good bit of honey, for sure. I think moral of the story here with the Flow Hive is, um, with any type of beekeeping, bees need to come first. We need to treat them with respect. We need to do hive inspections. Uh, we need to make sure that they have enough stores for the winter. You know, yeah, I don't, it's unfortunate that, yeah, I could see that the flow hive could lead to some bee abuse, absolutely. And I hope that maybe my video will prevent that and bring some awareness to uh, that. Just because you have a flow hive does not mean and just take honey, like, without any regard for, you know, the bees and their happiness, their health, their longevity. If you have any other questions that I haven't addressed um, or concerns, legitimate concerns, knowing that my intentions are pure here, please post them down in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for your interest in bees and caring about them. That's very important. I think that more people need to care about bees. Um, and I hope all of you that were posting such aggressive comments you know, on behalf of the bees, I hope that you're also taking the effort to uh, not use pesticides and um, eat organic foods and uh, do other things to help the bees besides just typing away. So. Thank you guys very much. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I am going to be posting more videos now. I don't only do bee videos, so forgive me when I post videos that are not about the flow hive. But I've got a lot going on. So, so thank you very much and I uh, hope you have a great day.